Well, we're given some parameters. So we're given that a and b are consecutive integers, and a is less than 0 and b is less than 0. So both of them are negative is what that essentially means to us. We want to know how many pairs of a, b can be formed given that a plus 2b is going to be greater than negative 10. So here our parameters are definitely important because if I didn't have some sort of parameters on this equation, I could make an infinite number of a's and b's that are going to be greater than negative 10. But here I know a that they're negative and b that they're consecutive integers. So if I'm just looking at my basic consecutive integers, I should have negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. I could do negative 3 to negative 4 also here, and then I can just keep going. So. My guess is that I'm going to start up here. If this one totally doesn't work, then we might want to look at some other set of consecutive integers. So maybe we'll want to start at negative 10, negative 11. But it's always better to start at the very top when we're just looking at these negative numbers. So here, if I were to choose negative 1, negative 2 as my set, then I would have negative 1 plus 2 times negative 2 being greater than negative 10. And here that would give me negative 1 plus negative 4 is greater than negative 10, or negative 5 greater than negative 10, which is true. So I have at least one pair of a and b that can be formed. If I look at the next one, negative 2, negative 3, we're going to plug in negative 2 for a, plug in negative 3 for b, and see if that's going to be greater than negative 10. So here we're going to have negative 2 plus negative 6 greater than negative 10. And negative 8 is greater than negative 10. Also true. So we have a second pair. So right now we have both of these two pairs. Now we'll look at the next one. So negative 3, negative 4. And here negative 3 plus 2 times negative 4 is actually going to give me a number that's less than negative 10, because we're going to get negative 11. So this is not true, and this pair no longer meets the bounds that I've been given. So I only have two pairs of A and B, and that would be the answer here, is 2. So here, it's important just that we can basically plug in. It's almost like an evaluation type problem, but we have to be able to, A, remember that when we have smaller negative numbers that they're actually greater than a larger negative number, and B, be able to work with bounds in our inequalities. So see what we're given, that these two are consecutive integers, which means that we just add one or subtract one to get each of the two, and then that Basically, a less than 0 and b less than 0 means both a and b are negative. So that was sort of the important thing here. Um, and these are pretty reflective of the types of inequality questions that you would expect to see on your SAT. You'll see a few if you go through the College Board Blue Book. Um, yeah, that's it on inequalities today. Thank you again for watching Educator.